All right, guys, welcome to Smoke Dev Workshop, and today we are talking about call stack. This is a second video on the topic, and I'm actually looking into the actual structure of the call stack right now. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, what actually happens when you start your program in C++? For example, well, you have already two arguments on your stack. So, these two are nothing else but information about command line. So you will have a number of arguments passed to your program and you will have a pointer to an array of arrays of chars, which basically represents every command line argument that you were given by the user. And next thing that you will store is return address. This return address is stored here. So runtime that is actually calling your main and giving you those two arguments knows where to continue execution after your um, main has been finished. So these three values don't belong to call stack frame of your main function. They are part of the frame of the calling function. When you actually start constructing your main frame, you are using two CPU registers. The first one is called ESP and it's nothing else but pointer to the top of your stack. So right now this stack pointer is pointing to the return address of your runtime environment procedure. So the first thing that happens when you call a function, you push the value of your EBP on top of your stack. And what that means is you are storing the previous value of this register in this block and you are updating the stack pointer to point to the top of your stack. Whenever you push, you are updating the stack pointer to point to the top of your stack. So right now EBP is pointing to the base of the previous stack. So in order to point EBP to current stack base, we basically copy the value of ESP register to EBP and that allows us to point both of them at the same time to the base of the frame. Okay, next thing that we need to do is store registers of your CPU if that is supported by this particular implementation. And your stack pointer is being pointed to the top because we do the push operation and EBP is still kept at the previous value. All right. So we have our registers of CPU stored over here. Most likely you will get more than two. You will store, I don't know, everything that is important. And the next step is to actually push some local variables on your stack if you need them. Okay, so we will store, let's say one local variable. We don't need this tower to be too high because it will fall. <laughs> Uh, so after we pushed our local variable on our stack, we are updating the stack pointer again. Okay, so the stack pointer is pointing at the top of our stack. And now what we are ready to do is we are ready to continue with execution of our function. So this is a complete frame. This is one single call of a function. As you see, we have our local variables. We have our base previous base stack pointer. We have a return address to previous call. We can continue execution from this point in uh, our code. And we have some arguments that we can also read. And the current value of EBP allows us to access all of them based on their relative position to this address, right? So if we take this address and add eight to it, we will access the first argument. Add 12, we will access the second argument. If we subtract, four, we will access the first local variable. If we subtract 12, we will access the third local variable. And that is how the stack frame is structured. So you go through your program, you execute it line by line, instruction by instruction, and then you encounter the call instruction. And what call instruction will actually do is it will require you to run some other procedure, some other instruction. And what happens right now we, is we need to do a couple of things. Well, we are going to build our arguments for this function. So let's say that this function accepts one argument. For sake of simplicity, let's say that this function accepts only one argument. So we have this, we have pushed our argument on the stack. And what we need to do is we need to store the return address to this function. So what is the return address? As I explained previously, return address is basically the place that we want to return our execution to after we completed the execution of 
the called function. So how do we actually get this return address? Well, it is quite simple. The return address is actually the next instruction after the call. So what we actually need to do is read the register that is storing the current program counter or current instruction pointer, EIP, and this register stores the address of currently executed instruction. So we take this address, we add one to it, and we have our return address. We push this onto the stack. Our stack pointer is advancing, and now we are ready to call new function. In order to do that, what we are actually doing is we are updating the uh, instruction pointer register with the address of the called function. And as I previously explained, in every execution of every function, first thing that we need to do is store the previous base pointer on our stack. We are doing it by pushing it on top. So this value is pushed here. Now the stack pointer is updated to the top because that's what, what we always do. And what we are actually doing after that, we are copying the value of this register to this register. Both of them are pointing right now to the same piece of memory. Okay, that's very simple. We have this set up and we are already starting the execution of the second function. Second function may store some CPU registers, as I said previously, may store some local variables. So of course, after pushing anything to the stack, stack pointer gets updated and it's pointing at the top of our stack. So right now we can add some arguments to the next function and return address to this function, but we are not going to do so. We are ready to return from this function to the previous function and return some values from it. Okay, so how do we do that? We are copying this value to this register. That means that they both are pointing to the same piece of memory right now. Come on. So right now we are ready to restore these CPU registers back to the CPU. We can do that right now, uh, if this implementation of course supports this. And right now we want to store the return value of this function in the EAX register. Okay, so we have our return value. Right now we have our ESP pointing to the base pointer of this stack. These values are no longer used. They can be overwritten in future when new call comes in. So anything over here is to be discarded. But we don't set anything here explicitly to zeros or any other values because we don't want waste precious CPU cycles just to clear some values that, well, actually don't mean anything anymore. So that's why when you call a function and you don't initialize your local variables, you're getting some garbage because you're basically accessing the previous values of the stack. So something that was set here, but wasn't cleared with any zeros. Okay, let's return to our finished function. Right now we are in this state that ESP and EBP are both pointing to the base of the currently completed frame. Right now what we need to do is restore the value of EBP. We want EBP to point to the previous frame base. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's quite simple right now. All we have to do is pop the current stack and store the value in the EBP. Because as you remember, here we are storing the previous value of EBP in the blue block over here. Right here we are storing the previous value of the EBP. So we do pop and pop means two things. So first thing that is going to happen, we are putting the value that is stored over here in the EBP register. So we are pointing the EBP register in here. Okay, that's clear. And we are updating the ESP to point to this value over here. Okay, cool. So we have restored the previous state. CPU registers were restored. Return value is stored in EAX and we have our frame reconstructed. So right now we are ready to continue execution of this function. And all we have to do is basically restore the EIP or instruction pointer that is stored in the return address in this blue block over here. And we have access to it by reading the ESP register. So we read it, update the instruction pointer, and we are ready to go. And that's basically it. That's how the stack is working. As you noticed, and uh, nothing over here is cleared. It, it's, everything stays here. So when you are calling the next function, 
you will basically overwrite all of these values with next call. So it may be something else, it may be the exact same function, we don't know at this point. And that basically explains how the stack works. And that is it for today. I hope that you enjoyed, I hope that you learned something. If you did, consider subscribing, give a thumbs up, and I'm seeing you in the next episode of Smoke Dev Workshop. Cheers!